guys, it's time. I've had so many requests to play horror games, and, um, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just play some horror games, man. I'm pretty, I'm pretty spooked, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm pretty spooked out. Hang on, what is... No! No, 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 that's it. Oh my god. <sighs> no. No, that's it. Got tutorial over. We're done here. Hey, what's up, dudes? So, I'm really sorry about that intro, by the way. I'm aware that that was probably the most cringe thing ever, and you guys were like, just stop, please. But, you know what? It took me like 20 minutes to make that intro, so it's just gonna stay in there. Anyways, I'm in a C++ program, and I'm gonna explain pointers to you guys, and hopefully I can do this in like five minutes, because pointers are really easy. They're actually not that hard. And initially, going into C++, um, I found out what pointers were pretty early, but I didn't really know why you'd want to use a pointer. So, unfortunately, before I can explain to you guys what a pointer does, I need to explain a quick little feature of C++. So, given this program, all I do is declare a number set it equal to 10. You can ignore this stuff here. This is basically just some random stuff. It's boilerplate, pretty much. J just focus on this part here. So... Basically, I make a number and I give number the value 10. Easy stuff. And when I run that, the program obviously does nothing because that's all we do. We just make a number. What happens when we execute this program is when the computer gets to this line, it says, right, store the, the value 10, store that in the computer's RAM, in the computer's memory somewhere. So... Let's use C out to display the number to the screen. And when I display the number on the screen, we get the value 10. So one of the cool features about C++, uh, it's a very low level language. And because of that, we can use pointers. A lot of low level languages uh, support pointers, but yeah, you know, languages like C Sharp and Java have little if no support for pointers. If I run this, um, it displays the location on the computer's RAM where that nu uh, number is stored. And all I do is just put a little ampersand there. That ampersand says, go away, find where this is stored in RAM, and give me the location in memory that it's stored at. And so really, all a pointer does is it just stores these little locations. A pointer stores the location of something. So, I can't say and my pointer equals at number because this isn't a pointer. It's, it's not made to store um, a memory address. It's made to store a value like 10. So, we put a little asterisk there and that says, hey, this is a pointer. Store the address of something in here. And so we're saying make a pointer and store the address of number. And now if I do my pointer, we can now um, see the address. So basically we use pointers to store these special little addresses. So now hopefully you get pointers. They just store addresses basically. Uh, they, they store the address of a certain value. There's also some more complicated stuff called pointer arithmetic and things like that, but I'm not going to get into those right now. Um, not that useful particularly, but the main use of pointers is something really cool called pass by reference. So I'll explain what that does. So let's write a function called change number. And it's going to take a value. And all it does is set that value equal to 70. So I'll get rid of this pointer really quick. And um, so we make this number. We set it equal to 10. I'm going to use this function to change the value to 70. So we're going to say change number number. So that's going to set this equal to 70, or so you would think. So when we run this program, for some reason it gives us 10. Hang on a sec, why is that happening? Well, 
the way that functions work in programming is what's actually happening here is when I call this change number function, I pass in this, it then creates a copy in here, and then it changes the copy to 70, but it never changes the original value. That's useful in a lot of cases. A lot of the time you want a copy. You don't want to change the initial value of this, right? You don't actually directly want to mess with the value. But a lot of the time you do. So how do we do that? We use a pointer because if we give it the direct memory address, then it's going to change it rather than create a copy. If that's confusing, then you'll see in a sec exactly what I'm talking about. So instead, we'll change this so that it takes a pointer and we'll put a little pointer in there and then we'll pass the address in so we're now saying change number but give it the actual address of this this time and now there's no copy being created it's changing this and when i run it we get 70. this is really useful in um the unreal engine because say the unreal guys make a function that takes a vector and changes the value of that vector they can't do that unless you pass the vector to them by reference. So they can't do that unless you give them the value directly. And that's why most of the time in Unreal Engine you're going to be declaring pointers and things like that because a lot of functions do require that you pass a pointer to them. There's some other stuff, um, for example, in a lot of cases, um, if you pass a const reference, that's a lot faster, and I'll maybe do a video on stuff like that later on, but that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I mean, yeah, that's that's pointers. It's often very um, kind of confusing topic, especially when you first start out, but that's really it. A pointer just stores the address of something, and it doesn't really need to go much deeper than that. I guess that's it, really. So anyways guys, hopefully I've demystified pointers and I'll see you guys in the next video.